Shalom, 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 everybody. Shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Here we yes. go. Glory yes. Life Ministries. Glory Light Ministries. Today is that day, ain't it, Nabi? Yes, it is. Today is Shabbat. And it's beautiful out here. Yeah, it is. You know, for the past uh, few weeks, we've been, been doing... hot. Yeah. It's been hot. Yeah, yeah and the topic's been, been hot. hot, too. Yeah. You know, the Nephilims, the spirits of the water, and the mermaids and the giants and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not quite done yet. Mm -hmm. um, this was the month that the month that we set aside for that. So today we got another interesting topic mm -hmm. that I think gets overlooked at times. You know, so I'm not gonna do a bunch of talking. Let's pray mm -hmm. and let's get right on in yeah, there because true. yeah, it's interesting. Yep. You know, so y'all's gonna be left on the ground and be picked up <laughs> because mine was once we started. Uh, interesting. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get our prayer in. Uh, everybody, stretch their hands and ready to receive. Shema Yasharala, Ahaya, Allah Ya Nawa, Ahaya Aka. Here, O Yasha'el, Yahua Elahenu, Yahua is one. Abanawa, Shabbat Shemayim. Kodesh Haya Shemka, Ahaya Malakwata, Tabaa, Radhazamwanka, Haya Isha, Ba Arataza, Hawa, Haya Fa, Shemayam, Lathanla Nawa, Lakham Ka Wayam, Wasalak Nawa, Chawath Nawa, Kasalak Nawa, Chawath Ya Nawa, Walaa, Tabaa Na Nawa, Banas Wayam, Aba, Hawas Nawa, Manra kaya lakka a malakuf waha ala waha ta palath la alanyam aman. Amen. And so be it. Amen. So today, uh, we're still checking in with the Nephilims and their descendants and, you know, how is this spirit still around mm -hmm. when the Nephilim didn't even, you know, of course, they didn't survive the flood. So how is it that we still have these giants in the land? Let's get right on into it, Nabia. Anything you want to add before we get to flowing here? I just want to say thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate the comments. Yeah. Uh, we encourage you to um to to send us emails for prayer requests. Yes. And if you have any questions, you can call us. You know, we have an email and we have a, a phone number. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna um List that phone number uh, in our email so that you can get, you know, access to us if you need counseling right. or prayer or something. Right. So just let us know what you need. So we'll do our very best to meet your, right. your spiritual needs. Because, you know, there's a lot of ministries, you know, you, you, people are hurting. Mm -hmm. We get it. And they're you not know, available. And they're not available. I mean, and that's, you know, the most crucial time in a person's life, mm -hmm. you know, so. We try to be available via comment, right. uh, via email, or, or whatever we can do to help. This is what we're supposed to do. That's right. Yeah. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. We That's are right. disciples. And we are a brother's keeper. That's, That's right. right. We want to help one another. This is what the body of Christ is supposed to do. We supposed exactly. to help one another. So to start off this, you know, www.glorylightministries.info is the uh, website. And glorylight684 at gmail.com is the email, brothers and sisters. So let's get to it, Nabia. We're talking about the Raphaim today. The Raphaim. In the comment section, hey, give us a comment to see, you know, let me know if you ever heard of them. Uh, all right, down in the comment section. So once again, here we go. Glory Light Ministries presents. Who are the Raphaim? And here's where it gets interesting, Nabi. Yeah, it does. Very interesting. I'm talking about jaw dropping. All right. So we're going to present this about the Raphaim today. Next slide. All right, here we go. Who are they? The word Raphaim is used in two different ways in Hebrew. Now, I want you to remember the first way here. Mm -hmm. It refers to the spirits of the departed dead who dwell in Sheol. All right? Remember that. Also, number two, it refers to a strong, 
tall race of people who lived in Canaan. The second meaning of the word Raphaim is a literal meaning used to describe actual people who existed. And they still do, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to put it all out there. All right? So the Raphaim in the uh, Hebrew Bible, the, the, the BLB, let's pull it up here, 7497. All right, let's take a listen. Strong's H, 7497, Raphaim, Raphaim. Raphaim, all right? These were a race of people, mm -hmm. a.k.a. giants, mm -hmm. an old tribe of giants. So, now one may ask, giants, mm -hmm. Nephilim, mm -hmm. go together. Right. And also, through this Bible study, we're going to see how the Nephilim, mm -hmm. the Raphaim, mm -hmm. And the marine spirits all came together. Wow. Through the book of Enoch. Bible study, folks. Get your pen and paper. Mm -hmm. Get your record button. Hey, like, subscribe, and share. Because this, this is going to answer a lot of questions that some people may have. Mm -hmm. Raphaim. So that's a, so it says down there that they're what is an old tribe of giants. Old tribe of giants. Oh, but you say the Nephilim didn't survive. Don't spoil it, Navia. I won't. You say the Nephilim didn't survive. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't. So how did these race of people grow like giants, like the Nephilim? Mm -hmm. mm. All right. A different tribal name. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Let's see if there's any more information on this page. So the Raphaim, giants, and these are old tribes of giants. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's get back to the commentary here. I'm going to give everybody a minute. If you want to write that down, H7497, you can always, you know, hey, we encourage you guys to look this up yourself. Yeah. Make sure you do your research. That's very important. Exactly. That's right. So, the Raphaim was not the description of a person's ethnic ethnicity, but rather a characteristic that the people of a certain area shared. All right? The word Raphaim means terrible ones. And they are described in the Bible as giants and mighty men. Next slide. So, Number one refers to departed dead spirits who dwell in Sheol. Mm -hmm. Departed right? dead spirits. Said, so, so remember that. Remember that. And number two, a race of tall people. Race of tall people. A.K.A. giants, mm -hmm. an old tribe of them. See? Just like the Nephilim. So from this first slide, we can say that these were the, the descendants of the Nephilim. Were part of the bloodline. Oh wow! Okay. You see, all right, and we're gonna we're gonna give you proof here. Okay. All right. Stop for a second. Let's get it in. We got plenty of visuals today and plenty of commentary, so I'm gonna try to refrain with the comments and all of that, so that you can understand where we're going with this. Mm -hmm. So, who are the Raphaim giants in the Bible? Take a listen. The Raphaim. The Rephaim, or Rephates, are mentioned several times in the Old Testament, and they are described as giants. These people's names literally mean the terrible ones. The Hebrew word Rephaim has two distinct meanings. It's a figurative description of the dead, similar to how we think of ghosts. Rephaim's second meaning is a mighty people of tall stature who live in Canaan. The term appears to be descriptive rather than ethnocentric as in Jew or Assyrian. This video will concentrate on the second meaning. The Rephaim are mentioned for the first time in Genesis 14, when they were conquered in a battle with Keterlaomer and his allies. When the Israelites first visited the Promised Land after their exodus from Egypt, they were terrified because it was inhabited by giants. The term used is Nephilim, which refers to Anak's sons. Numbers 13, 33. 
We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Giants were found all over Canaan, but they were known by various names including Rephaim, Zuzim, Emim, and Anakim. According to Deuteronomy 2, the Rephaim, like the Anakites, were strong and tall. Deuteronomy 2, 20 through 21. That too was considered a land of the Rephaites, who used to live there. But the Ammonites called them Zamzamites. They were a people strong and numerous, and as tall as the Anakites. The Lord destroyed them before the Ammonites, who drove them out and settled in their place. Og, the last of the Rephaim in his land, was described as having a bed 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. Could the Rephaim have been actual giants? The Septuagint uses the Greek word Gygus and Titanes to translate these and other verses, indicating that the ancient Jews thought of them as giants. They are commonly described as standing between 7 and 10 feet tall and are referred to as mighty men. The Egyptians wrote about giants who lived in Canaan and other countries' folklore is replete with such examples. The ancient world accepted the presence of giants as historical fact and the Bible depicts them as enemies who were destroyed either by God's judgment or in battle with men. So where did these enormous beings come from? Genesis 6 can give us some explanation. Genesis 6 When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Shepheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark, and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all the living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. But whatever Rephaim's origins, it is certain that a race of giants, strong, tall people, existed at one time, and many cultures interacted with them. Even now, there are people who grow to enormous proportions, whether due to genetic disorders such as gigantism, 
or to perfectly natural heredity. Okay, so did everybody catch that? Everything was destroyed mm -hmm. from the earth. From the earth, on the grounds. That's the right. Grounds. So that's including the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, numbers 13 and 33, we, we got it on the next slide, but it 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 it, it tells you that these were the, the, the children of the Anakim. We're gonna check on that today. And the Anakim were descendants of the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. You see? So you ask your question, okay, so nothing survived the flood, mm -hmm. but how did they get here? Let's go to the next slide. Brothers and sisters, here it comes. I'll spoil it for you. <laughs> Here's where it gets interesting. Interesting. Okay? Oh, Bible study. I just love it. All right. So now these Raphaim, let's, let's take a look at, 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 at a couple of scriptures here. All right. And you remember in Numbers 13 and 33, uh, let's let's go there. To, uh, go to Numbers 13 and 33 for me there, uh, Nabia. I got on the next slide, but let's go ahead there early. I've got it here. 13 and 33. And 33. Okay. All right. Read that for us. Okay. And there were, it says, and there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak which came on to Nephilim, which mm -hmm. came which came of the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. All right. So now my mind say there, there we saw the giants. Mm -hmm. They call them giants. And the parentheses, the descendants of Anak came from the giants. Mm -hmm. So in the cipher, it used the word Nephilim. So the Anak are came from the giants. That was the descendants of it, apparently. Exactly. All right. So the descendants of the Anarch were the Raphaim. Mm. They were giants. And the Israelites and people in certain areas, they had battles with these giants. We're going to get to where they come from, how they got here. But let's take a look at the battle with the giants. All right. Let me put my glasses on here. The Raphaim or the Raphaites appear first in a battle with King Calat Lamar. And his allies defeated the Raphaim along with the Zuzim and Emim people. The Raphaim were similar to the Anakim. Deuteronomy 2 and 21. Let's click here. And it says, that also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time. And the Ammonites, called the Zemzemjuans, a great a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their estate. So the Lord destroyed them, Nabia. Mm -hmm. He destroyed the Nephilim. And then, wait a minute, the Anakim and the Raphim, they all came after. Mm. Right? So search in scripture, oh, we come up with that one. Now look at this. Who were the Anakim? You see? Wow. So you had the, we're we, we, we going to break it down. Break it, break, we're going to break it down and slowly segue how they got here. So, as you can see in Numbers 13 and 33, what does it say? There we saw the giants. These were the Nephilim. All right? The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. All right, so now let's take a look at this article here. Who were the Anakim in the Bible? You know... I just want real Go quick here. It says like right here in verse Deuteronomy 2 and 17. Oh, I didn't 18. get that with you. Deuteronomy. What's that again? Uh, that's 2 and 18. All right. It tells about a land. It says in 16. It said, after they had all died, the Lord said to us, today you are to pass through the territory 
of Moab by the way of A-R-R. A-R? Mm -hmm. Okay. What that word means. The boundary of Moab? Yeah. What does it say? In it, it says the same thing. This day you ought to cross over the A-R, the boundary of Moab. Mm -hmm. And when you come near the people of Amnon, do not harass them or meddle with them. Hmm. Oh, wow. Don't trouble. Okay. Start war against them because I am not going to give you any of the land that I have given them. Hmm. And it goes on. This territory is also known as the land of the Raphaim. Right. So we have a we have a map that's going to show where these people were. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's you know what? Let's let's not even play around with it there, uh, Navia. Now, who were the Anakim? So I guess what we do is we 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 go in around the circle because we got to know all the outside mm -hmm. so that we are you know deeply understand this thing here so now let's read a little bit of of of, of this here the first paragraph says the giants picture picture today can be gruesome grotesque creatures mm -hmm. with green warts and quick teeth these giants aren't found in the bible but the anakim are the Anakim were the giants who descended from Anak. They may not have looked like they popped up of a fairy tale, but they still caused the people of that day great fear and turmoil. All right? So now these Raphaim came from these people too. Who were the Anak in the Bible? Let's go on down here. This one right here. What does the Bible say about the Anakim? After the 40 years of wandering and the death of Moses, it was time for the Israelites, the ancestors, to take the promised land. The Anakim, however, still remained in the area as recorded in Numbers 14. Joshua was promised entrance to the land of Canaan after he possessed his faith in God's promise. Giants wouldn't stop him. So these Anakim, being that... Uh, 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 Moses mm -hmm. was supposed to take the people in the promised land. He didn't, but Joshua did. And he sent spies over to see what was there. And this is what they saw. Right. They saw these giants. And then they was like, oh man, I'm 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 fearful of 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 of, of, of these of these things. You see? So they went into battle with these giants the descendants of the Nephilim and the Anakim. You see? So now let's move forward here. Here we go. Now, what was that location there? All right. The Raphaim were living in Canaan, and Israelites were terrified of them. They didn't want to enter the promised land because it was inhabited with giants. All right. So we read this prematurely. Mm -hmm. Numbers 13, 31, 33. Mm -hmm. All right. The sons of Anak. Now, if you look over here on the map here, right up in this area, right up in this area, right up in here was where these giants were located. And then we're going to get into this part of the map here, Bashan, in just a minute. So as Joshua and the Israelites were entering into the promised land right after Moses died, this is what the two spies saw. They saw giants. Mm -hmm. But but Safa, they, they were supposed to have been destroyed. Wow. Moving forward, we want to segue into what's going on. So now, one of the last Raphaim in those days uh, was the king of Bashan. His name was Og. All right? Og, king of Bashan, was an Amorite king who was defeated by the Israelites as they entered the promised land. Looking like grasshoppers. Og was stated to be 13.5 feet tall and six foot wide. Wow. Deuteronomy 3 and 11 records that. Let's go check it out. We got it right here, Nabi. Okay. Oh, okay, yes. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Wow. And dead, his bedstead was an iron bedstead. 
It is not in Araba of the people of Amna. Nine cubits is its length, and four cubits its width. So that's 13 and a half wow. by six foot wide, according to the standard. All right? That's a big, big, big guy. Big guy. Big six king, foot wide. Giant. 13 and a half foot tall. Wow. So now in Deuteronomy 3 and 11, it records that he was the remnant of the Raphaim. Turn to it in your Bible there. Let's get it physically. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 3 and 11. We segue our way into what? Where did these come from if the Nephilim was already gone? It says here in 3.11, it says yes. King Og, O.G., was the last of the Raphaim. See, they, it's called Raphaim. All right. His coffin, made of stone, was six feet wide and almost 14 feet long, according to standard measure, measurements. Mm -hmm. It can still be seen in the Amorite city of Rabah. Now, what I encourage you to do, brothers and sisters, let's take this Bible study to the next level. You know, you know, we spend a lot of our time watching things that we shouldn't on TV and, you know, having conversations with people that we shouldn't. But, you know, let's dig into these facts. All right. The Bible says that you can find that today. So how about somebody in the comment section? Look that up and send us the link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look it up. All right. Because I, I didn't get a chance to, to look it up, Navia. But hey, let's 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 all participate in the comment section. Send me the link to that. They say you can find it today. Let's pull it up. It says Amorite city of Rabah. That's right. So now, this giant of sixty cities was likely one of the people who caused the Israelites to lose faith in Yahuwah. This lack of faith resulted in the Israelites being banished to the wilderness for 40 years until that unbelieving generation passed away. So the Most High used these giants for his purpose. Yeah, he destroyed the Nephilim, but Safar, Nabia, how did these giants survive then? Let's keep moving here. Mm -hmm. Down in the comment section, someone can send me this link here on the, the city uh, where you can still find this, uh, put the, 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 the link in, this, in the comment if you don't mind. So now let's stop for a second and let's watch a little short video about King Ah, uh, mm -hmm. Basham. So if you go back to the map, mm -hmm. these giants were in the land of Canaan and there was also the king of Bashan. He, he ruled over 60 cities. So these giants were scattered all the way through that area. Mm. Okay, should we go back to the area here before we play this clip? Yeah, let's look at that area. Now, let's, let's look at this area one more time. Right here. Okay. So the geographic of Canaan. So right up here in this area, and this was before Joshua and them, you know, we'll crossed over to the, the, yeah, mm -hmm. to the promised land. So they had to fight these giants. And then here is Bashan, right here. Mm -hmm. In order to fight those giants, because, you know, they were so tall. And then, you know, we were like, you know, our people was like grasshoppers to them. How did exactly. grasshopper take down a giant? Can you imagine that? We're going to get into they it. They had to be so no skill. Of the most high you, gave wisdom. The strength. Gave them wisdom beyond to, exactly. be able to figure out a, strate a strategic plan. Exactly. To bring them down. Right at the end, here's the surprise. All of these topics that we've been teaching all this month, us month is connected. The water spirits, the giants, the evil spirit, all of them. All right? Now, let's take a, a look at King Ah. Slowly, we're going to segue into the explanation. But let's get a foundation of these giants. All right, here we go. The biblical record of a giant by the name of Og, king of Bashan. For Og, king of Bashan remained of the remnant of the giants. 
his bedstead was nine cubits the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it. Bashan, which was called the land of giants so says Moses, writing 3,500 years ago. King Og's bedstead would be 15 feet or 5 meters long. The ancient territory of Bashan now lies in southern Syria. The Bible says that the conquest of Bashan by the Israelites began with Moses and was completed by Jair. In Argob, one of its little provinces, Jair took no less than 60 great yeah, cities, fenced better. with high walls, gates and bars, besides unwalled towns a great many. Such a statement seems all but incredible. How could a province measuring not more than 30 by 20 miles, 50 by 32 kilometers, support such a number of fortified cities, especially when the greater part of it was a wilderness of rock? But, mysterious and incredible as this seems, the cities built and occupied for... You see this? Wow. Look at those footprints. Wow. Now, those look like grasshopper feet. Compare it to that print. How many toes you see? One, two, three, four, five. But usually they have six. Right. Don't they say they usually have six? That is a giant. That's a lot. Okay. Let's keep rolling here. A thousand years ago by the giants. 19th century explorer, Josiah Porter, traversed their empty streets. He opened doors of their houses. He slept peacefully in their long deserted halls. From a tower in one of them, Salkia, Porter counted some 30 towns and villages dotting the surface of the plain. He reports, on the spot, with my own eyes, I have seen that it is literally true. The cities are there to this day. Some of them retain the ancient names recorded in the Bible. Porter, the giant cities of Bashan. These ancient cities contain probably the very oldest complete specimens of domestic architecture now existing in the world. Various Bible writers describe Bashan as almost an earthly paradise, the strength and grandeur of its oaks, the beauty of its mountain scenery, the unrivaled luxuriance of its pastures, the fertility of its wide-spreading plains and the excellence of its cattle. Remnants of the oak forests still clothe their mountainsides. Ancient Bashan comprises a vast field of basalt, elevated some 30 feet above the plain. It is called the Ledger. Here stood the giant cities. Surrounding it was the fertile plain of Bashan. Worldwide, most ancient cities have vanished. Not Bashan. It is literally crowded with towns and large villages, most of them, until recently, deserted. The walls of the cities are 15 feet thick and 30 feet high. Porter found the huge gates still in place. These ancient streets are paved, still perfect, not a stone out of place. Even the walls of houses are up to Now something had to be tall enough to go into that. Wow. Something had to be big enough to build that which can be seen right now today. It's still there. It's still there. Let's roll. To eight feet thick, built of large squared blocks of basalt, without cement. Rooms inside private houses measure up to 20 feet high. Huge rooms and apartments in perfect preservation. When Porter explored this area, he was stunned. So perfect was every street, every house, every room, so perfect, yet not a sound. Huge houses built among wild rocks, hundreds of houses per city, still perfect, but not a man to dwell in them. Remains of fountains and statues. The rocks are black, the soil is black, the buildings are all black, but not gloomy. The grass is green, the oak foliage glittering in the sun, is brilliant. The private houses bear the marks of the most remote antiquity. They leave us to conclude that the cities were built by giants, a race of giants that has been extinct for more than 3,000 years. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? 
Here we have the biblical record, more than 3,000 years old, containing incidental descriptions, statements and statistics, which few men would be inclined to receive on trust. Now, brothers and sisters, this was after the flood. Mm -hmm. The flood was recorded in Genesis, way back there. So the flood came when Noah was about 600 years old. Mm -hmm. You see, this is all afterwards. So this is what the Bible study about is about today. See, the Nephilim, the giants, they were destroyed during the flood. So how comes the Anna, the Anakim, and the Raphaim, where did they come from? We set the tone here for the answer. Let's roll. Which some would throw aside as glaring absurdities and gross exaggerations, and yet which close and thorough examination proves to be accurate in the most minute detail. There is plenty of evidence of ancient black basalt cities, mostly within modern townships, which are integrated with the ruins. Some of the evidence is very good, including the high arched doorway into a large house in Alharisa, which has cleverly designed, high arched stone ceilings. It supports a new house which has just been plonked on top, with livestock and accumulating debris occupying the rooms below. These cities are really walled towns normally only about a hectare, two and a half acres, in area. They appear to be scattered around the ancient fortress just outside El Codor, which is built on a high volcanic plug. This fortress has been built and rebuilt several times since, but there is plenty of evidence of really ancient foundations and structures dating well before the Roman ruins, which are very obvious. I imagine that King Og, referred to in Numbers 21, ruled from this fortress. Unfortunately, it is now a communications center for the Syrian armed forces, this may be the actual reason the UN are oppressing Syria. I have no doubt that the occupants of the Bashan cities were very large people because all the doorways were wide and high. However, I could not tell how high the rooms were because there was always a few feet of debris on the floors and entrances, I would guess 12 feet high, on average. Syria and the Middle East are being destroyed, assimilated. I believe ISIS are mercenaries but first most. A demolition crew. Please share, 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 or subscribe. Okay, so now looking at this, Navia, mm -hmm. it makes you drop your draw. What well, now? Yeah, draw. And why? I'm going to say this mm -hmm. in code. Why are they, read between the lines, mm -hmm. over here? Mm -hmm. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Is it a real W-A-R? Or is it something to cover up for something else that we're looking for? The U and the S. Hmm. It's not about O-I-L. I guarantee you. What happened to the coffin of Gilgamesh that they say they found? It disappeared, brothers and sisters. No one knows where it is now. Who found it, though? I'm saying, through this Bible study, you can put two and two together and pray and ask the Spirit of the Most High to give you the wisdom, the knowledge to understand how evil and which way and how this world is going. Mm -hmm. Well, why are you there? Mm, good question. Walking around in the sand. Where it's supposed to be nothing. That's a lot. Hmm. We're not done. Let's get started, brothers and sisters. Just getting started today with this Bible study. So I hope you read through that. So King Og was supposed to be the last remnant of the Raphaim. We got some clips today. And at the end of it, I want you to tell me whether or not he was the last or not. All right, let's move forward now. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Now that we didn't lay the, 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 the numbers 13 and 33, 
We see in the Bible where there were giants, the Israelites fought them, how tall they were. This is way after the flood. Mm -hmm. What is going on here with history? Well, if you ever want to know history, pick up your Bible and open it. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say, Nabi? Yeah, absolutely. Right? So now here's where it gets interesting. Question. How is it that the Nephilim giants were all killed in the flood and yet somehow also managed to survive to be the source of evil and sin through corrupted DNA? Wow. How? Answer. And Enoch. We read how the watchers fathered the race of the giants and that these dead giants will continue to plague and torment humanity until the end of days. Let me repeat that. When Enoch, and we're going to get it, right towards the end, we're going to read it. We read how the watchers fathered the race of the giants and that these dead giants will continue to plague and torment humanity until the end of days. Navi, are the days ended? Not yet. It's still going on right now. All right. Point taken. Mm. All right. Next slide. Now, I'm going to play a short little clip of this. Just a little bit of it. And then we're going to get into the scripture. So hang on here and pay attention to this. We will watch closely. Many by now will know of the apocalyptic Hebrew text of the Book of Enoch, a text that is ascribed to the patriarch Enoch, who was the great grandfather of halfway Noah. through, okay? Whilst the book contains events that coincide with biblical understanding, such as the flood, it also contains many aspects that are not considered biblically canon, or at least aspects that the average reader would not have considered, because the Bible alone doesn't deem it necessary to explain. Of course, I'm mainly talking about the Watchers, the sons of God, who were essentially angels who in the book of Enoch go against God's wishes and impregnate the mortal women. The Watchers, who in retrospect are fallen angels, are not exactly acknowledged by the Bible, in video, but in the book of Enoch they are key here. characters that serve as a catalyst for both the terrible things that come to plague the earth and also the reason why God sends a flood at all. As the Watchers impregnate the mortal women, this unholy union leads to the women producing monstrous offspring, giants with unsatiable appetites and rageful tendencies. They are known simply as Nephilim. In today's episode, we'll be exploring what exactly happened to the Nephilim across multiple stories, including the Book of Enoch, the Book of Giants, which is a fragmented Jewish follow-up to the Book of Enoch that details the Nephilim's fate, and the Bible, which interestingly does show us in several subsequent chapters that the giants remained on the earth in the days after Noah, which means that somehow they either survived the okay, flood. So I'm going to pause it here, Nabia, because I think we got the the the, the groundwork has has been laid. All right, so let's let's go ahead and move this to the to the to the next slide. All right, one second. But what I want to do is this. Hang on one second. Let's get back here all right let's do this now if you have an apocrypha but let me fix this first so we can move on to the next thing after this one second let's pull this down bear with him yeah let's see here Trying to figure out how to get. Okay, here we go. All right. I do this every time. I'm so sorry. All right. We take it to the end. There we go. All right. So now, just for one second, let's 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 do this. If you have an apocrypha, do you have an apocrypha over there? Turn with me to Enoch. One Enoch. Chapter 15, and let's start with verse 8. So you wonder how did the how did the how did they survive the flood? Okay. 
supposedly. Well, the Nephilim didn't, right? The Raphaim are here, the Anakim were here, and the Enoch were here because the people saw them going into the promised land. Mm -hmm. Now, starting with verse 8, it says, Now the giants mm -hmm. who have been born of spirit and of flesh shall be called upon earth evil spirits. And on earth shall be their habitation. So in the other scripture, what did it read? They will be here to plague and mm -hmm. torment until mm -hmm. the end of days. Again. Right? So now, evil spirits shall proceed from their flesh because they were created from above. From the holy watchers was their beginning mm -hmm. and primary foundation. Evil spirits shall they be upon earth, and spirits of the wicked shall they be called. The habitation of the spirits of heaven shall be in heaven, but upon earth shall be the habitation of terrestrial spirits who are born on earth. Mm -hmm. Right? These spirits of the giants shall be like a cloud, shall be like clouds, which shall oppress, corrupt, fall, content, and bruise upon the earth. They shall cause lamentation. No food shall they eat, nor shall they be thirsty. They shall be concealed and shall not rise up against the son of man and against women, for they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. All right. So the answer, we know that the Nephilim didn't survive but we also know the Nephilim were called giants mm -hmm. outside of their bodies, evil spirits. So these evil spirits possess the people and it started all over again. Mm -hmm. So this is where the Raphim, and Akim, and the Enoch comes from. Yes, true, the Nephilim didn't survive the flood, mm -hmm. but the evil spirit did. Mm. Wow, interesting. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is where the Raphaim come from. The Anakim, this is where they come from. It's the evil spirit, mm -hmm. and it started all over again, because I'm going to show you that Yahuwah, the Most High, already knew they wasn't going to listen. They wasn't going to listen. So now let me fix this so we can get back to the commentary here. One moment. Bear with me here. All right, so let's get rid of this. Let's pull this down. All right. Okay. All the way to the end. There we go. Thank you, Father. So I wanted just to play the beginning of that one. Mm -hmm. Right? Just to show you that, hey, the Nephilim Bible doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. The flood destroyed everything on earth that you could see tangible mm -hmm. but not the evil spirits. Right. So later on we're going to do the connection with the marine kingdom and everything else. Be prepared for your jaw to fall mm -hmm. because mine was. I'm just now picking it up. The Holy Spirit took us down this, down this, I mean, this, this, this learning thing here. You know, I've been in school all week, right? Let's move to the next slide. So if you have a, an Apocrypha, 1 Enoch, chapter 15, verses 8 through 10, will explain to you how that spirit survived and how these other giants came about with the same DNA, the same bloodline, because it got corrupted the same way. I know, right? Mm -hmm. And I got some clips showing you recently. Mm -hmm. Not only the ones that they find the bones in the ground and ancient, but I'm talking about some stuff that's like a few years old. These spirits are still among us, the Raphaim. Let's move forward. Here we go. 
And here we go. Very short Bible study. I want you to dig into this. All right. So now what I just read in 1 Enoch chapter 15, I'm going to play it and let somebody else read it. Mm -hmm. I want you to close your eyes and imagine this. So Enoch 1 chapter 15, Enoch 2 chapter 16, and Enoch 1 chapter 19. Are they all Enoch 1? Exactly. So listen up. We're going to read it again. I read it for you physically out of, out of my apocrypha. But just in case you don't have one, we're going to play it. Here we go. So listen up here. E 1 Enoch chapter 15. Here we go. The Lost Books of the Bible. Follow with the us. The first book of Enoch chapter 15, verse 1 to 12. And he answered and said to me, And I heard his voice, Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness, approach hither and hear my voice. And go, say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men, and not men for you. Wherefore have ye left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives, and done like the children of earth, and begotten giants as your sons? Let me pause for one second. So they know they knew that they had done wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me go back. Exactly. The portal is closed. Let me go back. To no the, more to going back and forth. State, Watch it. Exactly. Stay. Couldn't do it. The Most High is holy. You are stained with sin now. But Enoch walked with God. Mm hmm he had favor with Yahuwah, right? He'll lay him down and have conversations. So the watchers went to him. Hey, can you go up and stand in the gap for us? And maybe if you, you know, speak up for us, the Most High be like, all right, I'll forgive you. But you find that uh, went back to verse, uh, verse one, where it says, go, say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent you to pray for them, you are to pray for me and not me and for you. Mm -hmm. So you get an Enoch to do something that you're supposed to be doing for man. You know, uh, I have a question real quick. You go know, ahead. Like, repentance wasn't offered back then. Exactly. Repentance was offered when Christ came. That was way down. Years so, later. Yeah, years, years later. So they were already ahead asking for repentance. Crying, but they were... Right. Um, Repentance was only for mankind. Right. Not for angels. Right. They couldn't repent, but they wanted the humans to help them get back to the portal, to the first heavenly estate, uh, wanting to, I guess, be forgiven of what they've done. But they knew they had messed up. And so now they they go into man, mm -hmm. which was Enoch then, mm -hmm. to go and, you know, discuss their cause mm -hmm. with the creator. Mm -hmm. And the creator with a voice said, hey, go and say to the watchers, hey, you shouldn't be standing in the gap for them. They should be standing in the gap for you. Let's continue with the story here because we got a lot more to share here. And I don't want to make uh, this video too long yeah. because this is very important information. All right, let's move forward here. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women, and have begotten children with the blood of flesh, and, as the children of men, have lusted after flesh and blood as those also do who die and perish. Therefore have I given them wives also that they might impregnate them, and beget children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you. For as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now, the giants, 
who are produced from the spirits and flesh, shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, because they are born from men and from the holy watches. Did everybody hear that? So that just what we read here, that that evil spirit, the earth, where they're inhabited. Yeah, the Nephilim, they died in the flood, but the evil spirit did not. Let's finish up here. This is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst, and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. There it is. So this is why you still have, and I can say still have, a race of giants mm -hmm. today. All right, let's move on to the next one there, Nabia. Enoch 1. Chapter 16, if you guys have an, an Apocrypha, please take this trip with us here to Enoch chapter 16. Listen up, here we go. The Lost Books of the Bible. The first book of Enoch chapter 16, verse one to four. From the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants, from the souls of whose flesh the spirits, having gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment, thus shall they destroy until the day of the consummation, the great judgment in which the age shall be consummated, over the watchers and the godless, yea, shall be wholly consummated. And now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them, who have been aforetime in heaven, say to them, You have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you, and you knew worthless ones, and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women, and through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them therefore, you have no peace. All right, brothers and sisters, did you hear that? You knew worthless ones. So third of the angels that were up there in heaven and filled with Satan, or Lucifer, I'm sorry, they knew them. You knew the worthless ones. So I sent you to teach mankind something different. But I wasn't done teaching you yet. Right. I wasn't right. done yet. Wow. You know what that reminds me of? Go ahead. I'm going to pull you down here. Reminds me of the Garden of Eden. I mean, the Most High put the man and the woman in the garden, told them don't eat that that tree that was in the mist, exactly. that was of knowledge, good and evil. Exactly. He wasn't done teaching them yet. One done. He wasn't he done. Put it there for a reason. All they had to do was just wait and be patient and be obedient. Wasn't done. Wasn't done yet. Why? Wasn't done yet. Wasn't done yet. Wasn't done yet. So now it says, let's let's go back over there and let's make sure we got this so everybody can understand. Uh, chapter 16, verse 3 says, Say in heaven, have you been secret things, however, mm -hmm. have not been manifested to you. Yet have you known a reprobated mystery. Wow. And this you have related to women in the hardness of your heart. Mm -hmm. And by the mystery have women and mankind multiplied evils upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, you knew worthless ones. Mm -hmm. I wasn't done revealing things to you. This is the most high. Revealing to the angels what I need you to reveal to the people. I was not done. 
And before he can even get a chance to, to reveal those things, he had wow. slept with the women. It happened. It happened. It happened. Now let's move on to chapter 19. This is going to answer a lot of questions for a lot of us because it answered a lot for me. Here we go, 19. The Lost Books of the Bible. The first book of Enoch chapter 19, verse 1 to 3. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits assuming many different forms are defiling mankind and shall lead him astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand, till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. And I, Enoch, alone saw the vision, the ends of all things, and no man shall see as I have seen. Do I need to do I need to replay that? Do I need to replay that? Did everybody hear that part? Let, let, let me see if I can go back here. Did everybody hear that part? They, they, they don't want you to see that. Uh, let's see. Fair use. Hang on. Now, did everybody hear that part? What happened to the women? Let's get it. It said they became sirens. Right. You all know what that is. We've been touching on this mm -hmm. all week. Let me rewind this for one second or two. Brothers and sisters, let's listen to 1 Enoch chapter 19 again. Hang on. I had it over here. Oh, in the name of Enoch, Show me where yeah, it found it. That's right there. It was 19. There's 19. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, here it is. I thought I highlighted it. But let's back it up just for a second here. Let's listen to 19 once again. Listen up. Here we go. Lost books of the Bible. The first book of Enoch chapter 19. Verse 1 to 3. And Uriel said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits assuming many different forms are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand, till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. And I, Enoch, alone saw the vision, the ends of all things, and no man shall see as I have seen. Exactly. Brothers and sisters, all of these Bible studies do this. So the marine spirits, the sirens, the mermaids. Because that's what sirens are. Mermaids. Exactly. They all come from that. Thought I had it over here. Nabia, take it over for just a second there. Let me hunt for something here. Mm -hmm. okay, you know they got a movie out. Y'all, it was on Netflix, I think, called Sirens, and it was about the mermaids. Wasn't that something that kind of let you know what's going on in movies and things like that? Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. It's coming up. So we touched on the book of Enoch. Mm -hmm. and the Nephilim destroyed during the flood. Evil spirit stayed. You can't flood a, a spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So you did it again. These women that did it again, they were made sirens and went into the water because what were they to do brothers and sisters bible study time what were they to do what were they to do let's see let's go back to one enoch 
chapter 15. Where is it? Verse. Because uh, they was to create havoc on the earth. Thank you. Tormenting. This is what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Let me find it here. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Do battle. Cause war. Uh, just cause problems with mankind. Exactly. I'm looking forward to these days. That a lot of stuff. Okay, all right, here we go. I'm getting close, I'm getting close. Mm -hmm. One moment here. I cannot find it right now, but this is what they were supposed to do. You know, cause destruction. Mm -hmm. That was the one of the main purpose is to um, cause basically havoc. With exactly, I can't, I can't even... Yeah, we, we read it in two. It was in uh six, it was in uh one and sixteen. One and sixteen? Mm -hmm. It was sixteen? Mm -hmm. One and sixteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see it there. But anyways, uh our brothers and sisters, I have to rewind it. But anyway, uh destroy, mm -hmm. torment, right, uh cause war, cause war, anything evil, mm -hmm. because this is their habitation and this is what they were supposed to do. Later on, we just in just another clip or two, we're going to get into the book of uh, Jubilees, mm -hmm. and it's going to explain it a little bit more. That's why it's important that you guys, brothers and sisters, you grab yourself a, 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 a apocrypha. So you can read. You yeah. Can study some things. Yeah. I have the Cambridge apocrypha, and what it does, that explains the apocrypha in a little bit more detail with side notes here, with the annotation. So let's get to the, the, the let's dig a little deeper. So now in Enoch 19, it tells you, Uriel explains to Enoch how sirens became sirens, mm -hmm. a.k.a. mermaids. Mm. Through this, these evil spirits mm -hmm. that were left behind from the Nephilim. They can survive the flood. You get it? It's because... They live in water. Water. The Most High already knew the people still wasn't going to listen. It's amazing. Next clip. Now, are they still here amongst us? You tell me. Now, here's a story of a special force guy. Over in that same area, mm -hmm. remember, Bashan, Syria, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. these places. This is recent, brothers and sisters. Let's cue it up. No need to play with it. Listen up to this. After three years of intense military training, I had become a Navy SEAL, joined my first SEAL team, which was SEAL Team 2 in Virginia, and I had joined my platoon, my 25-man platoon, we had gone through all this additional training at the team to prepare for deployment. And here I was three years to the day, almost exactly from when I went to boot camp, getting ready to deploy as a Navy SEAL to Afghanistan. But none of that training would prepare me for how intense my first couple of weeks in Afghanistan would be. So the flight to Afghanistan is pretty routine until you enter Afghanistan airspace when your pilots let you know, hey, you've entered Afghanistan airspace, they turn the lights to red in the inside of the plane, uh, and they get ready to descend very rapidly into the base where we would be landing. You know, we can't afford to be in the air for any longer than we have to be because there's a risk of getting shot. So there's a super steep descent, and then they tell you to stay away from the windows, right? So you're avoiding the windows in case you get shot at. And I remember thinking like, wow, like this is really it. We're here, we're in a war zone. Like we're nose diving into bases to avoid getting shot at. Like it was intense and I'm in my twenties. Like it was just kind of cool. Then the ramp opened, the back of the plane opened and we all got out and we're inside of this very well fortified base. You know, we're safe in here. And immediately I was struck by the just stunning beauty of the landscape. And I remember looking out at all these snow covered mountains. And I remember thinking like, how is this a war zone? This is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. I don't think I really appreciated just how foreign of a place Afghanistan is relative to where I come from. We get out to our site and that night they wanted to go, they being the team that we were relieving, 
uh, they wanted us to go on an operation, we were going to be up in the mountains. And I remember distinctly them talking about the cave systems that were in these mountains. And I remember thinking like how creepy that was that we would be up on these mountains walking around. It's so isolated. It's so foreign. And there could be like people hiding in caves that we could accidentally fall into one of their caves. Like it just, it really, really creeped me out. And so I was talking about how creepy these caves were and the interpreter was like, you know, what's really creepy is back in 2002, there was this fairly well documented case of another special operations unit, the Army Green Berets, coming in contact with a creature in a cave and they actually got into a battle. 2002. This is just one, brothers and sisters. 2002. <clears throat> Listen up. With it, and they lost one of their soldiers to this creature, and it was mm. fairly well documented. But then it was quickly kind of silenced. I, I mean, certainly the story was interesting, but I didn't really believe it. Maybe it was some animal. Maybe it was some person. Whatever it was, there was some explanation to it. It wasn't until now that I actually started exploring different strange occurrences and strange events, and I looked and found some testimony from one of the soldiers that came forward anonymously, who was a part of this operation used in contact with this creature in Kandahar. And what struck me about his testimony is it sounds authentic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell that soldier's story and I'm gonna tell uh, the other kind of corroborating witness stories as well to try to give you uh, a picture of what happened in Kandahar in 2002. And you can be the judge if you think this is fact or fiction. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place because that's what my channel is all about. And I upload three to four times a week. So if that interests you, I would encourage you to please gently ravage the like button and then subscribe to my channel and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any of those three to four weekly uploads. All right, guys, let's get into the story. In 2002, an army infantry unit just vanished. They were on patrol in the Kandahar mountain range in Afghanistan, and they stopped using the radios. They stopped calling in. No one knew what was going on. They didn't call in a TIC, which stands for Troops in Contact. Basically, any military unit, if you're out on an operation and you start getting shot at, you radio in to your higher command, hey, Troops in Contact, or TIC, which signals to them, you need to get aircraft on standby. You need to get ready to send reinforcements. They need to be ready to support you. But they only do that if you signal that you're in a tick. And it's a lot of people, if anything, will call it in too early. You know, units are known to call it in almost prematurely sometimes. And so the idea that a, a unit would vanish without calling in a tick or any sort of communication about any gunfight or any ambush or anything, it's a little bit strange. And so they disappear. The army decides that in order to, to find them, because this is obviously a really big deal, they would get their most elite unit. So the Army Green Berets, that's their very elite special forces. They would send them out to find this missing unit. And so one soldier that was a part of that elite special forces detachment, who just goes by Mr. K, uh, he would come forward years later and tell the story of what happened once they were tasked with this mission. So they, they leave via helicopters and they fly out to the Kandahar mountain range about four clicks, so four kilometers about, from where they believed was this infantry unit's last known location. And so they land and they start doing this fairly methodical search through the mountainside. They knew that they were in enemy territory and at any time they could get into a gunfight, they could be ambushed, there's all these cave systems all over these mountains. And so it's slow moving to begin with. Plus they're looking for this lost infantry unit. So it's just a very slow movement through the mountains. And so over the first few days, nothing really happened. They didn't come in contact with the enemy. They didn't see any sign of this missing infantry unit. They just walked along the mountains carrying a bunch of gear and that was it. At some point they noticed a little bit farther ahead that there was this distinct pathway leading up the mountain and kind of around the corner. And it looked like a goat trail. There were lots of goats that would run around the mountainside and, and it looked like a very well-developed goat trail. And they decided, let's just go up there. If nothing else, we can go, go up onto wherever this leads us and maybe look down across the other side of the mountain and, and see if we can see anything. And so the team starts making their way up this goat trail. And as soon as they start making their way up, they start noticing that there are little pieces of 
American military equipment on the ground. There are pieces of radios like whip antennas and housing of the actual radio itself. They found military style backpacks as well. And they started finding pieces of uniforms that belonged to the missing infantry unit. They knew based on the patches that were on these uniforms. So as they're walking up this trail of broken equipment and uniforms, they start seeing some bone on the ground. They didn't know if it was human bone or what, but they start seeing broken bones scattered on their way up to this kind of plateau. And so now the, the special forces team, I mean, they're incredibly well trained. I mean, I'm not just being biased here. I mean, the, the, the Army Green Berets, the Army Special Forces, they're very similar to the, the Navy SEAL teams, which I was a part of. Two different units, no doubt, but very much peers. And the level of training you get in handling situations like this one, now granted, this one's pretty unique. You're so well trained that when things start getting dangerous, it's like your, your training just kicks in and everybody's does. And so I would imagine that when they saw this, what they were thinking is this was an ambush. This infantry unit was ambushed and we're in this, we're probably coming up on the ambush site. And so they're, you know, taking defensive positions and they're moving slowly and very tactically up this mountain and they're keeping their, their weapons pointed at the leading mm. edge on their way up to the top of this mountain. They get to this plateau. Uh, it's like a flat section of the mountain, right? It's like a steep mountain and there's like this little like shelf almost. And there's more equipment scattered and more bones scattered across it. And there's all these cave entrances right in front of them. It's like, as if they were intentionally placed so that they fed out onto the shelf. And so they start moving towards the mouth of the caves and they realize without even getting very close that even though the mouth of these caves are pretty large and everybody could go into the cave, there is a steep drop off. Like you'd walk in and then it just goes straight down and someone kind of peered over the edge and couldn't see how far it went down. And they decided that it was just too dangerous to go in there because clearly something happened here where American lives were lost, you know, based on the tattered uniforms and equipment. And so let's just pull back and take up defensive positions, looking at the entrance to all of these, these cave entrances. And so as leadership goes down, kind of out of the, the fatal funnels, if you will, outside of these caves, Mr. K, who's the guy who's told us this whole story, he said he's looking at one of the entrances to the caves and he sees a flash of movement inside of the cave. And he like looks over at it, he doesn't have time to react to it or anything. And all of a sudden a spear comes flying out of the cave, this big, like massive lance comes flying out and it goes right through one of his teammates whose name was Dan. And so Dan's down. And so the whole team saw that. They didn't see who threw it, but they certainly saw the spear hit Dan. And so as they're like shocked and just keeping their weapon up, wondering what's gonna happen, mm. out runs this, by Mr. K's account, a 12 to 15 foot tall man with a red beard and red hair down past his shoulders, comes charging out, howling like a war cry. He's got animal skins for clothes. He just looks super dirty. And he runs over to Dan to pull the spear out and probably use it again. And the rest of the team at this point is broken out of their shock of what they're seeing. And they start engaging this giant. And the giant didn't really have a chance to fight back. And in 30 seconds, the giant is down too. So Dan's down and the giant is down. And the whole team is like, what just happened? So after the dust had settled and all the, the, the shooting had stopped, they went to check on Dan and, and Dan had passed away. And so they called back into higher headquarters and they're trying to describe what happened. A very large, possibly human creature threw a projectile that hit Dan. And so they sent two helicopters out, one to retrieve Dan and the team, the other just to hoist up this very large human-like creature because they wanted to know what it was and they struggled mightily to get it, get the netting around this big creature. Uh, it ended up weighing over 1,100 pounds. Uh, it had six toes on each foot and it had six fingers on each, on each hand. Uh, they load it up, they string it onto this helo and it takes off and the team gets into the other helicopter and they go back expecting to be debriefed as soon as they get back to base. The helicopter with the giant would fly to an airfield and they would meet up with a crew of a C-130, which is another big military aircraft. The pilot of that craft would publicly say that he remembers seeing a 12 to 15 foot tall giant person with six fingers on each hand, six, and six toes on each foot. 
and he would say that's what he saw even though it was later redacted and made top secret. Mr. K and his team, they flew back to the base to be debriefed and so they had to provide an after action report. It's something done in the military, you go out, you do any operation, you come back and you write up what happened. And so Mr. K and his team decided to just be honest about what they saw. And so they described it again in detail, you know, six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot, you know, it came out, it threw the spear, it hit Dan, you know, it's this horrible situation. And once they submitted it, their leadership said, you gotta rewrite that, like, we're not gonna accept that. So Mr. K said they ultimately rewrote it and it just sounded like a typical engagement in the mountains with the enemy. And it was made top secret and then they never saw it again. And that was it. Mr. K said that he and the rest of his team also had to sign non-disclosure agreements to not ever talk about what they saw. Uh, and they never got any word about what actually happened, like, what did they do with the body of the giant? And they just never got any clarity out of it. It was just basically made top secret, redacted, and they were told don't talk about it. So it would take until 2016 when Mr. K finally just said, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go public with what I saw because my friend died and they're acting like, you know, this didn't happen, but it did happen. And so that's why we have this detailed report of this mission where they came in contact with the giant of Kandahar. I don't know how. All right. So interesting. Remember, here's where it gets interesting. The cave, same area. Uh -huh. Ashan, all these giants that the Israelites were fighting, mm -hmm. they're still here. The Nephilim evil spirit. The Nephilim's body passed away, but the evil spirit was bound to the earth. Did it all over again. Had sex with, with, with the women again. The women went into the water as sirens. And then the offspring went into the cave. The Raphaim. Mm. Who are they? Are they still here? The same giant race of people that the Israelite false to get into the promised land are still here. It's just one story. Mm. Let's cue wow. up something else here. Yeah. You get what we're saying? Jaw dropping. So you tell me, are they still here? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Put it in the comment section so I can read it and see if your thoughts line up with mine. I'm quite sure they will. <laughs> All right. So now, here we go. We're going to get off into another thing, and we got to ask ourselves, why? Why? Why are you there? It's got to be a reason why you're there. Are you trying to get that DNA to do something that you have no business doing? Because that evil spirit is controlling these people. And I'm going to say these people, and I'm going to leave that alone. Let's check out this clip, brothers and sisters. We're going to wrap it up here in a minute. This is the last clip, last two videos, and then I'm going to pull it down. We're going to discuss it a little bit, and we're going to back off. All right? Check this out. The real reason... We invaded Iraq in Babylon, Nephilim DNA. Attention. One moment. Come on. Okay, so don't want to play. Hang on. We had to go down at the top, maybe. It says we don't use Let's see. Okay, let's get it like this. One moment. Come on. Okay, you don't want to play, brother. Okay, what about at the bottom? It says we on YouTube. You can't click there. No, no, no. It's put together. But listen, you can pull up this for some reason. I can't, I can't play it here now. But this is something that you can pull up on real YouTube. It's the real reason we invaded Iraq. And then over here, the giants emerging everywhere. Let's see something here. Let's go back. 
It's okay. All right, so I can't get these two to play. I must didn't embed them right. That's okay. You can look these two up for yourself. All right, so here's the reason. Uh, check this one out. The reason reason why we invaded Iraq, Babylon, Nephilim, DNA, is the reason why they're over there doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, here's another story here that you can look up. Uh, giants emerging everywhere. They can't hide. These giants are found all over the U.S. Oh, man, I can't believe I can't play this. But it's okay. Let's move forward here. It's the last clip. Now, this is the conclusion, brothers and sisters. It's okay, because you can get on YouTube and you can pull these two stories up yourself. So that's okay. You, you, you see the one to the left and the one to the right. This is all fair use, and it's for the public. Right. Right? Fair use. Fair so use. now, the conclusion, we're going to read the Book of Jubilees. All right? Uh, chapter 10 Verses 1 through 12. Now, let me give you a minute to get there. I'm here. Just in case, you know, you got Apocrypha and you want to follow with us here. I'm going to say for today. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that up so you can read that. And then I'm going to read it out of, out of this here. Okay. All right, so the Book of Jubilees, chapter 10, verses 1 through, we got 1 through 12. 12. All right, so here's the conclusion to, to all of this Bible study here. Verse 1, and in the third week of this Jubilee, the unclean demons began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make her and destroy them. Exactly what they were supposed to be doing, the evil spirits. So think about it, brothers and sisters, the children of Noah. So the water is already there. It's already gone. Now, these evil, evil spirits have began to torment and lead astray the sons of Noah. Right? Verse 2. And the sons of Noah came to Noah, their father, and they told him concerning the demons which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his son's sons. And he prayed before the Lord, his God, and said, God of the spirits of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood and has not caused me to perish as thou didst the sons of perdition. For thy grace have been great towards me and great have been thy mercy to my soul. Let thy grace be lift up upon my sons and let not wicked spirits rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. Verse 4. But do thou bless me and my sons, that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth. And thou knowest how thou watchers, the father of these spirits, come on, brothers and sisters, follow with me, acted in my day. And as for these spirits which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation, and let them not bring destruction on the sons of thy servant, my God. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy. Mm -hmm. So this is after the flood. Mm -hmm. These evil spirits where they were dwelling the earth. The Nephilim are gone, but the evil spirits are still here. Verse 6, and let them not rule over the spirits of the living, for thou alone canst exercise dominion over them. And let them not have power over the sons of the righteous from henceforth and evermore. This is Noah talking to his creator, please help me, Father, that these evil spirits will not take over my sons and my son's sons, because I see they coming. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go in prayer. I need help with this because I do not have dominion over them alone. Get back to it. Verse 7, and the Lord our God bade us to bind all. And the teeth of the spirits, Mestimia, came and said, now this is the evil spirit, came and made a comment. 
Lord creator. See, people even say, you know, I don't believe in creation, but the demons do because they know. Mm -hmm. Lord creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. Because this is what I'm supposed to do. If you take them all, how am I going to do my job? For these... It's exercise power by will. Exactly. I'm let you know, the Most High has given mankind a uh, will. Exactly. To make a choice, decision, exactly. in possession. Exactly. Didn't possess them, but gave them a will. There you go. Power by will. Thank you, Nabia. Finish up that verse. It says, uh, Lord creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. For these are for corruption. And leading astray before my judgment, for great is the wickedness of the son of men. Even the evil spirits know men were wicked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now we live in the same days, in the days of Noah, mm -hmm. there's no friend. More wicked. Verse 9. And he said, and this is the creator talk. Let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of combination. And one of us he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines, for he knew, listen to this, for he knew that they would not walk in uprightness nor stride in righteousness. And this is mankind. Mm -hmm. The Lord already knew. The tenth part, yeah, I'm going to grant that, Miss Demio, because you're going to carry out my will. You think it's your will, but it's mine. Get on. He said, "Let my will be done in heaven, so shall it be upon the earth." Exactly. In the prayer, verse number eleven. I'm almost done here. And we did did all we did according to all his words. All the malignant evil ones we bound in the place of condemnation. That's the nine tenths. Mm -hmm. And a tenth part of them we left that they may be subject before Satan on earth. Verse 12. And we explained to Noah all the medicines of their diseases, together with their seductions, how he may heal with them with herbs on the earth. Herbs on the earth. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, brothers and sisters, everything is subject to Yahuwah, the creator. Mm -hmm. the evil spirits, the demons, all of that. He went to the creator and asked for permission. How am I going to do my will if you destroy all of my partners now? Yahuwah comes back, the creator comes back and says, for he knew that we would not walk in uprightness nor strive in righteousness. Mind-blowing. Mind blowing this Bible study was. Mm -hmm. It's been on a journey all week, folks, up yeah. until today. So, wow. who were the Raphaim? And I do apologize about the two videos. Uh, I must have didn't link the link right, but it's okay because I can go back to it. I do apologize. It is what it is. Let's see here. Let's you pull that down. Do your some research and pull them up as well. You did not do that, but it's okay. I'm sorry. Those two videos that we showed, mm -hmm. it's a reason why the U, the S, and the A, it's over there. It's a reason why this transhumanism and, and this this evil agenda. It's taking place over there in Syria, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, because they know these giants are still living. They have them. 
They have the DNA. They've captured several. Mm. And it's not for the good. These evil spirits have directed them on what to do with the giants. So who are the Raphaim? You tell me. Are they still here? You tell me. And those sirens that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, see where they come from? This was, hey, women, the women back then, you want to sleep with these? This is what you're going to do. You're going to become a siren. Enoch 1, chapter 19. It's right here. Brothers and sisters, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open. Max. And it shall be given. You ask the Godhead to lead, guide, guard, govern, order, protect, and direct your footsteps. We'll and through that. your Bible study, He will do that. He'll do it. He knows from His Word. He said it, and He will do it. So, Nabia, where did those tall race of people come from, even from back then? Yeah. Called the Raphaim. They're still here. They're still here. Evil spirits on the earth. The evil spirits that remain, they couldn't go anywhere, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. They had to stay here. Mm -hmm. This is their habitation. Yep. Yeah. Something else. And this ends our presentation on mm -hmm. who are the Raphaim. Mm -hmm. Here's where it gets interesting. Down in the comment section, Drop me a line. Was it interesting? Mm -hmm. I encourage you, those two videos that we showed, it go on YouTube, it. research them, and watch them. It's about the DNA and why we're over there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, not we. They're over there. There. It's for a reason. They're creating something. Fair use. Fair <laughs> use. In the yeah, comment. That's right. It's facts. Go ahead. Not fiction. Look it up. These Make army sense. guys, they've seen it. Seen them. They still exist. Any comments there you want to make there, Nabi? No, I just wanted to, um, as usual, thank you all for continuing to tune in. If you have any comments or questions or prayer requests, please right. make sure you get in touch with Light Ministries info. That's right. Or you can, you know, reach us via email. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would love to hear from each and every one of you. Yes. Well, we pray the most high's blessing upon you all and wisdom, because in the last days, it's important to have wisdom to be increasing your lives. Exactly. So that you would know what you know, what you know. Exactly. And to be led by the Ruach HaKadash, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. of the most high. That's important. So we want to make sure that you know, we all ask for the most important things so that in the end, mm -hmm. we endure to the end, we all shall be saved. Those that endure to the end, like the most, like the word of most I says, endurance to the end, endure to the end. So that's important. I just want exactly. to let you all know that we're here for you. Exactly. The Raphaim, this month has been mm. such a powerful month of learning. Very interesting. So now we know the 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 the, the watchers, mm -hmm. the the sons of God, what they did. Mm -hmm. The evil spirits stayed around, although the Nephilim were destroyed, because this was the evil spirit job. Brothers and sisters, study it. Mm -hmm. And so he mentioned something about the evil spirit. Listen to the 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 other spirits. No, that was that was the leader mm -hmm. of the the evil spirit. Right? right, he had to go in front of the creator to ask for permission, right, to keep some. Yeah, to keep some. I remember that. I, I, I do. Yeah, but it was he cut. It was another set of spirits too that fell with Satan. Exactly. Right. And these were the ones said you knew about the worthless, worthless ones. Worthless ones. You see, they got that's what they in got. chapter sixteen yes. of Enoch. Wow. So. The, the the third fell with Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Those were the, the ones that was watching them fall. You knew why they fell. Right. So now I'm sending you on another assignment. 
to teach mankind a little bit of time, mm -hmm. but you can't because you can't teach them no more than what I give you. Mm -hmm. And all you just went your own way. Disobedience. Well, I tell you. Should have learned. They, in other words, the most I was letting them know they could have should have learned from the worthless ones. Exactly. The Thank ones you. That fell with Lucifer. Right. Became Satan and the devil. And got stuck here. Got stuck here. On, on earth. And now you, you, mm -hmm. the, the, the watchers, their evil the spirit is stuck here. And this is where the Raphaim, the mm -hmm. Kim, and all of these giants that you see now that they've caught and they have in their possession. That's where they come from. Mm -hmm. So they're gathering up the, the, the DNA. To do what it do. Prayer. Ephesians 6. Put on that armor. You're going to need it, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Things are going haywire around here. And if you don't understand which way the enemy coming, how you going to know which way to stand? Put your dukes up. Mm -hmm. You see? Because it's using everything. Your children. People at work, people on the highway, mm -hmm. men, women, your family members. Yeah. It don't care because yeah. it's its job to destroy, mm -hmm. torment. How's heaven? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Break out in wars. There you go. So I hope this is the um, one of the last Bible studies we're going to have on the Nephilim, uh, the Raphaim. You know, the mermaids, the water spirits, Jezebel and all that. We're going to transition into another series here next week. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more. Don't want to spoil it. I'm like the python spirit. Let's not talk about it. Let's give you something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. That's coming up next week. And all of these spirits, mm -hmm. all of these topics, intertwine. Lead us out in prayer, Sister Nabi. Oh, Father Most High, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our Christ, our Lord, our Savior and King, we pray unto you, we come boldly before your throne of grace and yes. mercy. We ask that you would cleanse us, cleanse the people, that they would be holy unto you, set apart for you, Father, that you would direct their path, that you would give them wisdom beyond their years, that you would send your Ruach HaKadash, your Holy Spirit, to enlighten them, to increase the wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Give them the power that they need to do whatever you have purposed them to do. For you have a plan for them and it's to prosper them and do them good and not to harm them. Your spirit dwells with mankind for you said in your word that you would never leave them, never leave us or forsake us. Hallelujah. Father, we declare and decree your word to be truth on the earth. Because in the beginning was your word. The word was with you and the word was God and the word was with God. Father, we thank you. Father, we call your your people blessed going out and blessed coming in. And that, Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. In Yahushua HaMashiach, our Christ, Lord and Savior's name, we pray. Amen. The anointed one. Yes. Brothers and sisters, if you like I was when, when, when the Holy Spirit got done with me, Yes. I had to pick my whole body up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Yes. Glory, glory, glory. Right here. My, 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 my. Hope you enjoyed this Bible study next week. We're going to wrap it up with another one of these things that connect with the Raphaim, the Nephilim, the Marine Kingdom, and all of that. One more left. That's right. Don't forget to like and share. And subscribe and if subscribe. you like. That's right. Subscribe. If you like. If you like, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, brother. So what, what do we say? The water for tuning in right, so and shallow water.